With us now, uh, speaking of possible vice presidential contenders, we have retired Lieutenant General Michael Flynn. He served as director of the Defense Intelligence Agency from 2012 to 2014. He's got a new book out called The Field of Fight, How We Can Win the Global War Against Radical Islam and Its Allies. And it is out today. General, uh, a very busy big week for you because of this book. Yeah. Um, the other good thing, timing. yeah, <laughs> good timing. <laughs> other things swirling around as well. You know, it's uh, funny, a year ago when I sat down with the publisher, St. Martin's and Macmillan, I picked this date because I wanted this book to come out before both of the conventions, right. not having any idea. You just didn't like know. I had not even, I had not met uh, Mr. Trump at that point in time. Right. So, uh, it's because it's, it's an important message in this book, something that I deeply believe in. We're going to get to that message in one minute, but first of all, obviously, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people looking at you as, yeah. as a possible vice presidential pick for Donald Trump. Would you accept if he asked you? And... Uh, and what do you think uh, the biggest challenge would be for Trump and yourself yeah. if you guys uh, got elected? Yeah, I, I, first of all, it's an unbelievable honor that I'm, that I'm in the mix. And, and I never thought in my wildest imagination uh, as a kid growing up in the state of Rhode Island, small town, uh, that I would be uh, in this place today. Um, I think, I believe strongly that our economy is the greatest threat to to our country and frankly to the world right now based on just the things that are happening and I and I firmly believe that there are there are other major threats national security threats that we face I wrote about one of those that I, that I deeply believe in in the book uh, but there are other things happening around the world Russia and China just signed a a big deal uh, over in the Shanghai uh, cooperation organization so I mean, these are things that are happening that nobody's paying attention to and I think we have to pay attention to those things because they are going to affect the way our uh, country uh, goes, and, and I think that the direction of the country right now is, uh, is not going in the right direction. If, if I could, uh, in your last segment, uh, Mr. Robinson, mm -hmm. he made a great point about this, this sort of underlying shift that's going on in this country right now. It's both economic, it's jobs, but it's also a demographic shift. And I think the, the thing that Mr. Trump put his finger on was this business about illegal immigration. We have to understand what is happening in this country. And so, you know, I'm a guy that, that you know, as I, I has, as I have said, I'm from, I grew up in a, in a Democratic family. I, right. you know, I, I, but, I, but I believe that the Democratic Party is nowhere near to what I learned about when I was a kid growing up. It's not, it's not close to that, Joe. So we have a big shift going on in this country right now and, and will continue. And I, I personally believe that, uh, that, a, that a, a, a guy like Donald Trump has put his finger on it. And, you know, the, the, what has, the, the bubble that exists around Washington, D.C., and maybe Wall Street and places like Hollywood, they can't see outside of that bubble the rest of the country, the, you know, what's right. in between. Right. Well, Gene, since you had a good point, mm -hmm. uh, then we'll you know, give you the next question. Well, my question, you, you mentioned the U.S. economy, and right. you said that's the biggest threat. Um, but, in fact, the U.S. economy is doing better than, like, anybody else's economy, and the world is interconnected. So what, what do you have a solution? Do you have uh, policies you'd like to propose that would uh, get the economy going? Yeah, I mean, I don't have any specific things right sitting right here today in, in 30 seconds, but I, I will tell you that... Uh, we have to understand that there's two things that, that, that drive, I, and I want it to continue to drive the world for a long time, maybe another 100, 200 years if we can make this country last that long, and that's that the U.S. dollar is the currency of choice for, this, for the planet, and that the English language is the, is the language of choice for global commerce. Those are critical, and we have to understand that all the things that are happening, particularly with China and the Chinese economy and what they're looking at, I mean, these are... These are big tectonic shifts, as you implied uh, mm -hmm. in the last uh, segment there, about these shifts that are, these undercurrents yeah. that are going on in this country. So we just have to understand that, that there's something happening. Uh, you know, I, I have studied these things as an intelligence officer for a long time, particularly over the last 10 years as I've looked at the threats that we face around the world. Nicole. Have you had in-depth conversations with Donald Trump uh, that give you the confidence that he could pass that bar? Jeb Bush didn't think yesterday when I spoke to him in Maine that he met that 
threshold to be the commander in chief. Do you, as someone who's spent a career in the military, think yeah. that he's a qualified commander in chief? Yeah. First of all, the the people that are within that establishment, they need to check their egos. They need to check their egos. Do you think it's just ego? There's it, no reasonable well, question. So, and on in Trump's case, so I met I met Donald with Donald Trump almost a year ago. So uh, it was you know the latter part of last summer, and. I found him to be an incredible listener, and what I look for is, is the ability to ask really tough, smart questions. And the conversation that we had, which was basically about the world, what's going on around the world, to, and I think it was to give him a sense that his framework, his frame of mind was in the place where he, he just needed some, some reinforcement, I think, and, and that's the first time I met him, and I really wanted to know, are you serious? And to me, I walked away from that conversation uh, that this is a guy that's very serious. He's a guy that, that talks about winning, and, uh, and, and he obviously uh, made it through the crucible over the last year. And I think that uh, I, I do honestly believe that we need a new direction in this country, and I think the American public, for the most part, uh, are out there, and that's what they want. Mike Barnacle. We've been at war for 15 years. Yeah. Uh, Persistent the, conflict, and we can't afford to keep doing this. The American military, uh, members of the military and their families have paid a shattering price in yeah. terms of <coughs> deployment after redeployment. Uh, how do we combat an ideology today with all sorts of freelance operatives in many states around the world, yeah. non-state actors? Yeah, I, I think one of the things that I address in the, in the book it, it's a big part of it is the ideology is discrediting this ideology so you know as, as you well know as all of us sitting here know that we discredited the ideology of communism it took us 40 years to do that we discredited the ideology of Nazism it took us a long time but it also took us you know quite a bit of time in three 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 and a half years in in combat so uh, we, we cannot uh, withstand or sustain more of this persistent conflict we have got to get uh, what I call for in this book is a sort of a new 21st century alliance and part of that alliance are Muslim leaders around the world and there's some specific ones that I call out in the book that we have to get them to stand up and be counted because this Islamic ideology it's a political ideology built on a religion so how do it's get, a political ideology that's Riyadh, masking itself. How do you itself. get Saudi Arabia to jump in with us? You have, we have to place a different set of demands on the leaders of, of the Arab world, the Muslim world, and, uh, and, and there, there has to be what I would call reciprocity. You want, you want uh, you know, something from us, we're going to ask you to do something you know, uh, you know, for us as well. I mean, Are they not doing that th now? Th I don't think so. I don't think that we have that kind of give and take right now and I think that uh, in fact I know we need to to do more we need to be more demanding this is not the the foreign policy that we currently have this is tough diplomacy that we right. need but the West will not discredit uh, the radical ideology of ISIS will they it, it's up to Muslims no to discredit I think that, yeah I, I do think that we have to help lead that effort Joe though because because it's it's a struggle for them it's a struggle for them but these these countries know they know that they're failing, and they know that it's going to come back to bite them in the rear end. They're having the damnedest time in their own countries to do this. So they're going to have to come together in some sort of, you know, and I, I have, you know, sort of called it a, a NATO-like Muslim alliance. And the United States has to be part of that. This is not, you know, my, my recommendations are not a lot about military stuff. Right. There's always a military component, but that's sort of a, a lowercase m. It's, it's tough diplomacy. It's strong use of our information capabilities and, and uh, definitely our economic strength. But that economic strength is not like it used to be. And we have to make sure that we understand that. Thank you so much, General. Greatly appreciate it. It's called The Field of Fight out today. Uh, are you going to take a copy over to Donald Trump? He's just a couple blocks I now. gave him one. Oh, okay. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> read it. it. Read it. <laughs> All right. We will read it. Thank you, sir. Thank it's you. so great to have you yeah, here thanks today. Thanks for having me on. All good right. Luck. Still ahead this morning. Five-time Emmy Award winning actor Brian Cranston has portrayed several historic figures on the screen, but he says there's another role he'd like to take on one day. You played Trumbo, you played Lyndon Johnson, you played Bob Mazur, real-life historical figures. Anybody that you're thinking about or maybe would like to play? I'd like to play Donald Trump at some point. Really? Oh, he's huge. He's this Shakespearean character, this 
serial tragic comedic character. Who wouldn't want to take a bite out of that? I, Are I you working on your huge? Huge. It's huge. Let me tell you something. And this I could tell you. Wow. It is huge. <laughs> All right, and Brian Cranston will be on set later this morning. We'll be right back. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.